Here we go. Welcome back to the PT Graduate Podcast. And I'm very excited to welcome Donna Thomas back for a second visit. And there's a good reason for that. How are you, Donna? I'm good. Thank you, Rich. <laughs> good, good, good. Glad to hear it. Um, yes, congratulations are in order. That is the first core, port, uh, part of um, the call to say, well done. Congratulations on uh, winning PT of the Year 2023 Exercise New Zealand Exercise Awards. Thank you. <laughs> Pretty impressive. awesome. Very impressive. Um, mm -hmm. And back in episode 89, if anybody is keen to find out a little bit more about you, having started to listen to this episode and gone oh actually i might see i might listen to that one as well episode 89 was when we caught up so not that many episodes ago although there's a little bit of time and the reason we caught up that time was to celebrate you being a finalist and getting to the the last round of the awards and you mm -hmm. took me through how that went what it was like um you know that the whole process which is pretty involved number of different stages uh, final judging and you've done it all over again and been successful this time. So fantastic work. How yeah. was it the second time around? Um, I remember when we had our chat last time, I said that I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it again because it was so involved. Yeah. And then when the nominations came out again this year, I thought, come on, Donna, let's do it. <laughs> and yeah. it was really quite good because last year we got given feedback from the judges. So yeah. that was fantastic to be able to build on what I'd already done. Um, so, yeah, it was really neat to have that direction and to be able to tweak things where I needed to. So it was it was really cool. Yeah. And can, can you remember some of the, the feedback, what was said and, and whether it was useful? Uh, from last year? Yeah, from the previous, yeah. Yeah, so I guess when I first ever got, like I haven't been in the industry for, for very long at all, and a lot of um, my driver is to help people. And I remember one specific um, thing that they were looking at was KPIs. And my KPI was just client retention. Am I getting right. that good feedback from clients? And and right. still that remains one of my main KPIs just, you mm. know, on the side. But also there is the financial element to it as well. So that's what I looked at over the last 12 months on how can I track the financial side of things. Um, that was never really one of my strengths. So it was really quite cool to actually think of myself as a proper business because it is and mm. to um, act accordingly, I guess, and track it accordingly. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, you've obviously put a, a few systems into place as a result of some of that feedback. Are there other things that have changed I mean, it always evolves, doesn't it? But what, what else yeah. has happened in that that time between end of 22 and sort of end of 23? I think education has been a huge thing. So I jumped in with the Holistic Movement Coach and yeah. that's just opened up a whole new world to me. I think the more people right. you surround yourself with that have knowledge, but that you resonate with them, you're just going to learn so much more. Um, I remember in my live interview this year, oh, last year, um, yeah, someone yeah. had said to me, what would I have told myself 12 months ago? Um, what advice would I have given myself? And I remember one of it was, well, I think it was about having confidence to believe in myself. And I think that has something that's changed phenomenally over the last 12 months is that I do believe in myself a lot more than I did. Mm. Um, and I think that even stems from becoming a finalist in 2022, because then it's like, well, hang on, I'm playing with the big guns now. Like, you know, am I, am I actually at this level? So that was this well last year when I won it that was a very humbling experience um I think I'd mentioned to you it probably took me a good week to not feel so overwhelmed I cried a lot because I didn't realize that I could do that and I think a lot of personal trainers and I hazard to say some of the really good ones that that really do care about what they do I think they deal with their imposter syndrome quite a mm. lot where mm. you know they don't I don't know, they don't see their worth or they kind of think, you know, who am I to be telling this person what to do or, yeah. or whatever. But I think being able to win that award is is quite affirming to me as well. So, yeah, it's been yeah. Ama an amazing experience. Good, good, fantastic. Um, you were clearly prepared. I was there on the night, as you well know, because I was happy yeah. to be next to you. Um, you had clearly prepared for your acceptance speech, and I don't think that's an arrogant thing. I think that's a smart thing. Um, 
but I was really moved by the words that you said, particularly about the fact that when you were little, it was a sort of almost instinctive that you wanted to help a lady across the road. Like, you know, if you could see someone struggling or needing some help, you instinctively wanted to go and do something. And mm. then you told your story and then sort of closed the loop back from where you started about, and now you get to do it for your work is, is helping people. It seems yeah. like, um, you'd obviously had time to reflect and that it was it that what you do is really really important to you at quite a on quite a deep level it really is and I kind of I think that's why I found the whole process quite emotional as well um I am a really emotional person anyway and I have no I've I've always known that whatever career I took it I wanted to help people and um, I'd said in my speech I spent I think it was about 10 years working as a dispensary technician in pharmacy and I loved working like working with people and, and chatting them through their their prescriptions and things like mm. that but there was always that little something that was missing and I think it's that one-on-one -on -one and actually really making a change in someone's life mm. and I think I don't know even on a day where I'm get up and I'm like oh I don't really want to go to work today as soon as you show up and you see that other person and you motivate them and you get them to move mm. and and you see the benefits that they're reaping it just fills fills your cup it's just an incredible industry to be part of yeah mm. yeah it's phenomenally rewarding and I think um your story there about the the pharmacy work relates to a, a guy who I uh, did a small amount of work with who was a who was a physio, so originally trained as a physio, um, mm. and then decided to move into the, the exercise space because he mm. was tired as a physio of always fixing the broken people, the problems, the issues that were downstream. <clears throat> yeah. And he wanted to be more of the fence at the top of the cliff rather than the ambulance at the bottom. And, and that sounds very similar to your story about, yeah, it's okay to to help people and, and hand out the, the right prescription, but really that's that's it's quite a, a you know far down the, the journey of potentially illness, yes. um, hopefully temporary. But what we get to do is be that fence at the top and prevent mm. them ever getting to the edge because we're helping build in resilience. We're helping to uh, prevent a lot of disease, um, yeah. and and it, and because of that, you can see how people's lives change and it is which is what makes it so phenomenally rewarding you know such it, it, yeah. it is a powerful thing to to do every day isn't it yeah oh absolutely and it is really neat to be on the other side of it as you say you know the ambulance at the top of the hill not the bottom mm. um and being able to try and make those changes for people even well not make them for them help them make them themselves um uh yeah I couldn't imagine doing anything else to be perfectly honest <laughs> right that's yeah, good on you yeah. good on you you've found yeah. your thing Oh, absolutely. I didn't know it was possible to actually have the dream job, but here yeah. we are. <laughs> yeah, nice one. And I suppose going through the process, and, and and I would hope people listening are people that A, have already been through the process and are already believers, but also there may be people out there who haven't been through the process and have seen it and are aware of it, mm. but hadn't considered doing it. And I, I would love for those people to think, right, put your hand up and actually go through the process whatever category suits your business or whatever area you work in there's enough categories for everybody um mm. because it just helps that helps you realize a how lucky we are to do what we do and what a great bunch of people there are in the industry but also you know, the support that you get from from the judging panel and and and, and everything that, that you you go through in the process but also um the rewarding nature of the of the business and and <laughs> and how lucky we are to to be able to do it um, but the benefits Absolutely. you get from that, you know, you come out of it, whether you're a winner or not a winner, you've been able to audit your business and go, ah, actually, I've only been measuring this. But if I measure this, this and this, I'm going to mm. get a much better handle on what's going on in my business and therefore be able to do a better job, understand that my business is here and I'd like it to be here. You know, all, mm. all those all those sort of um, I guess they're the, the business elements of of running a PT business and when yeah. you know those things and have more awareness around them can make a much better go of things and therefore I guess live your passion even more because you can make it more stable you can make it um something that's consistent something that is 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 an ongoing entity that uh, you can really enjoy running absolutely and I think as well one of the biggest things that I've found is is all of all of what you've just said but also those connections that you make with other like-minded um uh 
professionals. Like when mm. I, I come from a really small town, so I only know the fitness professionals in my town. I didn't know yep. anybody else. And yep. if it wasn't for um, my gym manager who used to work for City Fitness um, and she was based in Nelson coming and talking to me about the awards, I would have never even, like that's just opened up a whole new world yeah. for me. And even, you know, this year, um, having a lot of people come up and introduce themselves to me and it just, you you have that, that network right throughout New Zealand once you start meeting more people and the more people you meet, the more opportunities that you might have or the more knowledge you can gain. And I just think even like the process of the awards was amazing, but there's also those little things that you don't even think of that just make it so worthwhile. And I think as well, with you know we we analyze our business a lot but even going down to like what is my why why do I do what I do what is what are my um, core client care values and mm. actually sitting down and naming those well for me I found that a lot harder than I thought I would because I just right. do what I do and I just feel what I do but labeling it is another thing entirely so um, it just teaches you so much about yourself as a person, but also as a professional too. So yeah, mm -hmm. I, I would highly recommend anybody does it. In fact, any personal trainer or group fitness instructor who comes by my path will probably get nominated. <laughs> <laughs> That's the great thing, right? You you can nominate mm -hmm. other people, can't you? When you yeah. sometimes see something they don't see in themselves. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And often it goes back to that imposter, um, imposter syndrome. A lot yeah. of us, don't see the potential that we have and sometimes it just takes someone else to believe in you um to put you forward so that you know you can have the opportunity and then you know get get that feeling from us it's it's amazing yeah 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 um so what's happened in your business obviously you've put a few things in place you've got some 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 systems that may not have been there prior to the first round in 2022 what else has gone on in uh, Donna Thomas Fitness in the last 12 months? So a lot of what I've tried to do is um, I'm a I'm, I'm at home a lot on my own. And so I have limited hours I have to work. So hmm. that was where I looked into how can I make the most of the time that I have and not focus on, oh, I've only got this many hours a day, yeah. but yeah. how can I, how can I make it work for me? So I, used to just do one-on-one -on -one PT or or duo um, sessions, but now I started to do some group fitness classes, um, some mm -hmm. strength workshops and stuff with people. Yep. And that has just been phenomenal. Um, I didn't realize, once again, imposter syndrome, I didn't realize how uh, successful that would be in mm -hmm. our small town. And it's right. been a game changer because I'm able to, I keep it small, um, up to eight people per class. Yep. Um, but I can you know, help those eight people in 60 minutes where mm. I can't do that individually with them. So mm -hmm. that's probably been one of the biggest, the biggest things. Yeah. Nice. Good. And so different categories, different um, target markets for the groups, or are they the same or yep. how does it work? So the all the classes are strength based, um, but I have a men's only one, uh, yeah, which good, is fantastic. Good. Gosh, the guys have got <laughs> some great banter like this. Yeah. It's always puts me in a fantastic mood after taking them. They're just really? fantastic. Yeah. And um, and then I have more, it's not specifically women, but more, well, predominantly women in um, lunchtime slots. So I tried to aim that at people who might only have a short lunch break, but we've got facilities and stuff uh, like showers and whatnot at the facility that I work at. So it's, yeah. you know, kept at 45 minutes, you'll get your work out in, you can go and have a shower, eat your lunch on the way back to work, you've done it for the day. And oh, that nice. seems to work really well for some people. I'll put away all their gear so they don't have to worry about that and yeah. they can just relax and take that time for them. And because mm -hmm. a lot of us are really tired when we finish work, right? So it's yeah. nice to be able to get it done and in in, especially for people who aren't you know, early birds, they yeah, get it done yeah, in the yeah. middle of their day and it's done. It's, it's sorted. They can go on their merry way. So yeah, it's great. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. Um, so you've mm -hmm. added classes in. Has So has that bought you some time as a result of, of doing that? Absolutely. So it's probably a lot of my one-on-one -on -one clients. I was seeing them a few times a week and I said, look, I actually think you'd really benefit from this class. We could still do, you know, one session a week and then you're getting two classes a week. It's more economical for you. Mm. It's time 
efficient for me mm-hmm. and like yeah they're getting more bang for their buck and 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 moving and it's been it's been fantastic so it's definitely freed up time nice so yeah. so it's freed up time it sounds like you're almost trading them down but they're doing more overall in terms of minutes of exercise yeah has that so despite that change has that still been beneficial for your business yeah, absolutely, because I'm still earning around about the same and ah. the clients are getting, I, I say more value, but in the sense of that they are committed to exercising, say, three times a week than just the two that cool. they were getting from me. So yeah. it's, um, and I mean, it's it's the clients that I've been seeing for a wee while that I know that they're ready for those classes, okay. Um, okay. but win-win because then mm. I have space. Yeah. A lot of my clients have been with me right from when I started, so that gives me the opportunity. I've, I've always approached it that I'm not going to be their trainer forever I want to give them the skills so that they can then be independent and go out on their own um that's kind of my core thing I don't ever want to just hold on to a client forever yeah and um and so that's where I can kind of shift them on and then I've got that space for the new people coming through that they can then have that one-on-one time with me and I can set them up so that they can move into that next step so yeah I like it so even if you didn't get any new clients you had more time so that mm. a, a, if you want to use that time, you can, your income's mm. the same, but it gives you more capacity if new people are coming in as well. So yeah, sounds, absolutely. Like a, sounds like quite a smart move there, Donna, smart move. It does. I'm surprised yeah. at myself. <laughs> <laughs> There's some things to be had. There's some, some people listening should be taking, uh, taking tips here, I think, because um, <laughs> yeah, it, it just makes sense. Right. And um, mm. you're work your... smarter, not harder. Yeah, exactly. You're adding to your your portfolio, your offering. Um, it gives it more breadth, which means that you're probably co- talking to a larger audience as well. Um, well, and a lot of people may find it intimidating one on one. So yeah, yeah. it also opens it up, as you say, to to more clientele that might be more inclined. And I'm yeah. always quite conscious. I know that um, you know we're in a hard uh, time financially and economically yeah. at the moment, yeah. and so yeah. I am quite aware of that for people so it's fantastic yeah. that I can offer people um an option that isn't necessarily going to break the bank so yeah I yeah, yeah. it's good to have options yeah my mind immediately went to people could join the group stuff and then trade up having got to know mm-hmm. you and go ah, oh, I like the cut of the jib I'll, I'll do some more individual work so it, it works yeah. both ways right Absolutely. Yeah. And I think the more, you know, the more people that, well, actually those classes have really grown as well by people attending the classes and then telling everybody. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, they've yeah. been trying to rope everyone in for me. So it's, you know, once again, your reach is becoming even bigger because once people see a familiar face, sometimes that's the the barrier that they need to overcome. It's not going to be something really um, new to them. They've got a safe person. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. So um, what's happened as a result of the award? What do you, well, obviously your your clients are going to be very proud, aren't they? They're going to, they're going to know, then it's not going to be a secret, but um, yeah. how's, how's that been for you in terms of the award and the community and it's in your clients and, and your business? What, what's, what's it done? I well, I I actually had someone uh, the other day even still congratulating me. So how many months <laughs> are we later? <laughs> yeah, good couple. So, it's still very, um, very much talked about. And I, yeah. to start off with, I didn't know how to respond to people because I was still quite overwhelmed by the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's it's given me another, I, I've started thinking differently as well. So I okay. want to be able to impact the community even more. So I'm looking at other options um, of what I can do to help the community, especially since I'm opening up a little bit more time mm. um yeah how can I positively impact the community a bit more to to help especially I quite like the idea of um going into schools and having chats with kids and stuff because I'm yeah. a big believer well a lot of clients that I see are obviously adults and they're unconditioned and it's very very hard for them to make that contact to come in and use the gym facility or go to a class but I'm a, I'm a huge believer that if kids start this kind of stuff and it's part of their normal everyday life to move their body, I mean, it's just like having a shower, right? It's part of your yeah. hygiene, really. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then it's not hard as an adult to do because, you know, while I was active as a child, like I played team sports and things like that, but nothing like what I do now. And yeah. I guess the people that I was, the adults in my life that I was surrounded with weren't necessarily super active people. Um 
so it's been quite a a completely different focus for me I guess mm. and I guess my children see I imagine that they'll grow up very very active as well they already are as kids but because the, you're role modeling that to them and so I I just want to try and have that trickle on effect with you know parents but also kids try and get them into it young so that it's not hard when they're older yeah I like it <clears throat> I like it and have you got many schools around the area uh, yeah, we've got three primary schools and a high school. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, so uh, my three children attend one of the primary schools. So I yeah. thought I might start with each class or each syndicate and Perfect. have like a wee fun fitnessy kind of yeah. session. Um, and I think that's it as well is turning it into something fun because mm, you hear mm. a lot of the time uh, I work in a rec center. So we yep. get people who want to come in. We get people who someone's convinced them to come in and we get people who don't really want to come in, but they're coming in. Sure. If they do something that they enjoy, they're going to stick. Well, they're more likely to stick at it. If they hate it, what's the point? They're not going to stick at it at all. So I think you've yep. got to, as a PT as well, you've got to find what makes someone tick. You've got to find mm. what they enjoy doing, mm. and it's got to be in there. Otherwise, mm. they won't stick to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so true. That's so true. And if you get, like you say, get them grassroots as kids, then uh, you, you're starting to create some habits that could be life life changing. Absolutely. I um I did a similar thing. My my daughter was at, at primary there. Do you, have you seen that sugar film? Oh, actually, I've heard of it. I don't think I've seen it, but I have heard of it. The um, they were very clever. Damon, can't remember his surname. Um, they did they did the they did the film, but they also created a whole bunch of resources that you can purchase and implement into schools. And oh. um, so I, I I didn't do oh yeah we did do some exercise sessions, but I did a like a, there was a nutrition component, and they were talking about that sort of stuff at school anyway. And so I grabbed all these resources and did a few lessons in my daughter's class when she was at primary. And I thought, you know, it, it wasn't something that stuck. It was more about sort of adding value to her and her class. But, you know, people get yeah. to know who, who this person is. And, you you know, you're talking to all the kids in the class who have parents. So you never know. It's a good yeah. bit of networking as well. But it's... A seed gets planted, mission. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. I think the more you talk about what we do and and and... I say educate, but just in general conversation, it just plants a little seed. And it might only, in a class of, say, 20, it might only plant a little seed in five of them, but that's five yep. people that might not become yep. part of the obesity epidemic, you know? Yes, you, <laughs> you just know, don't know, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think we, I, I keep reading motivational quotes at the moment, so I'm sharing a bunch, but um, I think one of them was this, you know, you, you don't realise how many people you're impacting because you they don't necessarily tell you, but, there's, there's a lot mm. going on that you're not aware of that is very, very positive. So there's, mm. you know, don't stop doing what you're doing just because you don't know about it. There's, there's lots going on. So um, absolutely, there's that, that reward thing again, which is so, so great with what we do. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so it's great to hear all those things that you've, you've been up to and, and the changes and the, the plans and, and on all those other things, anything else that, um, you know, you want to share or report? We'll do some tips at the end because that's kind of just yeah, the got, thing we always do. You do. Know, Ken, I am so prepared today. I wrote down three <laughs> tips. Oh, outstanding. outstanding. About <laughs> half an hour ago, I was yeah. like, oh, Rich asks for tips. I'm going to have to write. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So really, I need to get everybody on twice, right? Just so that they can yeah. nail the tips. <laughs> nice one. Uh, um, so yeah, let's, let's not skip ahead, but... Um, yeah, is there anything else in, in Donna Thomas Fitness that um, we haven't talked about that could be worth sharing? Oh, um, I found actually a really good uh, platform, I guess, for anyone who's looking at getting into online training with their clients. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that, that could be helpful. So it's called cool. Quick Coach. Um, I don't know yeah. if you've heard of Jonathan Goodman. Yes, the uh, Canadian dude. Yeah, so um, yeah. he has... I think he might have released it maybe the beginning of last year or the year prior. It might have been the year prior, actually. Okay. And so there's a free version of it where there's not ads, there's none of the frills that you kind of get with a lot of those PT apps. 
You can upload any of your videos to exercises um, from YouTube. Um, so they could be your own, or there's also a fantastic help group on Facebook that um, share different channels that they take videos from. Because yep. at the end of the day, in my opinion, a client doesn't really care who's demoing the exercise they, they just want to see what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they've got a completely free version, which I actually stuck with. They must have been running for a couple of years because I'm sure about 18 months now I've been with the free version okay. and I've just upgraded yep. to pro. And okay. that's really great because then you get your notifications through to your phone. It's pretty, I feel like it's pretty cheap as well. It might only yeah. be 45 a month. Yep, ish, don't yep. me on that, but yep. <laughs> ish. Yep. Um, but the free version still has everything that you need. It's great. So I would yeah. highly recommend anyone who's on the fence about that, yeah, giving it yeah. a checking it out. So do you use that for uh, specifically online clients or do you use it for face-to-face uh, -face clients who you want to add extra to or a bit of both? Or So you could, do, you could do both. At the moment, I only use it for my online clients. So I either have online clients or I'll do like a hybrid um, service where they have the online plans, but I see them twice a month okay. um, just to keep them on track or if they've got yeah. any questions and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But it just works fantastic to get that communication happening. But also for those clients like how I said earlier about how I don't want people to feel like they have to come to me one-on-one -on -one forever. That's another avenue that they can go down if they're competent in the gym and they know what they're doing and they're yeah. motivated to be able to get there, yeah, then yeah. that's a perfect option for them. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so is the program designed specifically for what they've got available? So let's say they can't get into the gym, then the videos that they can see are more made body weight or home-based. So you you upload all of the exercises you want. So it is a little bit time consuming to set up. I think other yeah. other apps might already have exercises preloaded into a library. You yeah. have to create your own library. So there is a little bit of lead work in that respect. Okay. But then you're not kind of sucked into well you can you can put in what videos you like sometimes i'll see videos on youtube demoing an exercise and i'm like mm, mm. that's not quite <laughs> how i would do that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you're in control of that um sure. that media that your client is seeing and you can do your own videos upload them to youtube and then yeah. load them into that as well yeah yeah so you can literally customize to suit the person a hundred percent everything's yeah. customizable yeah, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, it's good. Good to get those recommendations because there's a few out there now, aren't there? I mean, there's there's a there's a number out there, um, and yeah. different people have said different things over the years. But um, if you can sort of get a an idea of the top ones, then um, you can just check them out and speed the process up. Yeah, I think that's one thing that I found really hard when I was first looking at online training is that I had like the you know trainerize and either mm. fit like there's just so many and you could get sucked into a black hole trying to, you know, sift through them all and trying to work out what will work best for you. And I yeah. think quick coach is really ideal for people who want something quite straightforward. I think John actually refers to it as like a spreadsheet on steroids. Uh, okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> so it, it is very, like it, it doesn't have all the, like you can track, um, like they have like a results, what, what weights people are doing, what, um, how many sets, how many reps, all that sort of jazz, but oh. it, I found when I've actually personally used um, apps with other trainers that there's just so many options there that I would never use. It's just too frilly for me. So mm, people yeah. who are wanting something quite basic, but to the point, um, it's really ideal for them. Okay. And you okay. can't be oh, free, no. right? <laughs> you can't be free. It's always it's always good. And uh, you've always got the option to upgrade, I suppose, if you need to. But Yeah, um, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for that. Excellent. All right. Well, that can be tip zero. And then we can mm -hmm. have tips one, two, and three after that. Yes. So it'll sound like I'm reading a scripted thing. Kind That's of. okay. I'll be yes. writing while you're right while you're reading. <laughs> oh, good. So my first um, tip for any personal trainer is to keep learning. That is mm. the most important thing. And I love, um, I actually think I saw Jin had a story on her um, Facebook page the other day about being a life learner. Yeah. And I'm so in favor of that there's always something to learn especially in our industry things are changing all the time yeah. and I think you can't have too many tools in your toolbox no. you know and the more people you expose yourself to and talk to and get knowledge from then you can bring your own your own knowledge to to a client and I think you're doing your client the best service with the more not like the most knowledge you have so that's my number yeah. one sure. <laughs> love it excellent thank you very much 
Tip number two is to surround yourself with those that you want to be like and who are supportive and will hold you to a high standard. Um, I think I've always been, I used to play pool, believe it or not. Ah, <laughs> and I always yeah. played 10 times better if I was playing someone who I likely couldn't beat. So someone who was better than me. Now, I don't really like to think of people as being I guess more skilled than me. Yeah. I don't like to think of people as better or worse than other people. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. if yeah. you surround yourself in with those people who are more skilled than you, you are going to learn from them. Um, they're likely to not have a huge ego, hopefully, that they will help support you, like what I've found with HMC. They've mm -hmm. been incredibly supportive. Mm -hmm. And they do hold you to a high standard because, well, that's who you can touch base with. That's who you can help, you know, hold you accountable. Mm. Um through HMC, I'll just keep plugging them. Um, <laughs> Good on you. Good on you. Um, I have a, a a buddy who we kept, Julia, who we catch up once a week, and okay. we hold ourselves accountable. You know, we set ourselves goals, yep. and we check in each week to make sure that we're meeting those goals. I mean, sure, you know, Julia's not going to whip me if I don't get it done, but I don't want to let her down. So yep. use that accountability, and I think just like our clients need us to keep them accountable. We mm. need to have someone else that keeps us mm. accountable. So I think mm. that's important. I love it. And my third tip, and I feel like this is the most important one, and this is coming from the empathetic side of me, is that no matter how skilled or renowned you become as a personal trainer, you need to remember that for a new person to exercise a movement, that the gym is not a comfortable place for them to start off with generally. Um, often clients will agonize for a while before making contact um, because they're scared of change. And so you need to make sure that they feel seen. You need to make them feel that they have a place there so that they can you can make that impact on their life so that you can help them because it takes a lot of courage for them to reach out. So, yeah. I like that. And I think the way in which uh trainers do that would be different for each individual trainer wouldn't it you know so there's, a, there's kind of there's a big personality element in that in that comment um mm. what so what would be your advice so i, I like the principle but mm. how would you as a pt how would you deliver that how does how yeah. does donna do point three there so yeah. that people are comfortable and safe and, and so on yeah so internally I remind myself from when I first started going to a gym and I did find it really intimidating and I think it's important not to lose sight of that sure it's going to be great for some people they will just you know fish to water they'll love it yeah but then getting to know your client on a personal level they're not just a number they're mm. not just paying your bills mm. you need to know them um you know I've got some clients who are very uncomfortable in the gym, even though they've been seeing me for some time. So finding out what makes them comfortable. I actually saw someone today, um, a young girl, and I said to her, you know, so have you got any questions for me after we've done this pre-screening? And she said, I really don't want to go into the gym when there's people in there. And so if I had have never asked her that, yeah. I could have taken her into the gym yeah. when it was, you know, peak, peak time. And she probably would have never ever come to me again so you've got to ask the questions you have to get to know the client and see where their comfort levels are and but also put them at ease so as I said to her hey look that's fine these times are pretty quiet and if the, if you're feeling uncomfortable at any point we can go into this other room so they know that you're their safe person if you help them feel safe in that environment yeah you're good yeah. in theory you're good <laughs> and and so yeah it's about the right questions isn't it it's, yeah. it's so important. Yeah, and it's bringing that personal back to personal trainer. You you have yeah. to know them. And, yeah. you know, I think that's why in-person personal training or, or actually knowing your trainer, because I, I know that, you know, the internet is just flooded with mm -hmm. fitness influences mm -hmm. and, and what even that means, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But, <laughs> you know, you have to build up that rapport with your client um, so that they trust you because, Yep. And I even remember saying this in um, in one of my videos, I think, is that we will likely see a lot of our clients at their most vulnerable times, and you have to be um, you have to be mindful of that because that's that's a really big privilege for someone to to show you that, yep. and you have to um, you have to respect that and feel I don't know it's as I said I'm very 
emotional, yeah. <laughs> a lot of emotion yeah. driven. But yeah, yeah, yeah. you've got to realize what a privilege that is. Yeah. 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 Well, I think that's a real strength, though, you know, the fact that you are. And so I kind of that enables you to connect with people, understand them so well, and it, mm. and and ask the right questions because you can probably read people better than some, understand people from what they've said, read their body language, understand what they're what they're saying without actually using the words. You know, the whole um, <clears throat> physical communication, which is the largest part of communication, that's obviously something you're very very good at it, and yeah. so that's why those things are important to you because you've identified just how important it is for your clients so so good on you for for being so in tune and you know and and so new to the industry but so successful in in such a short space of time and I think that probably is is justified and, and explains what I'm trying to say in really in terrible words but you know that that's one of the reasons you've, you've won the award I think you know people have obviously seen that innate ability in you um mm. and your clients have the benefit of that so so well done and I think um and your advice is, is spot on today so thank you for that yeah no worries thank you awesome. <laughs> uh any questions i haven't asked that i should have oh i didn't think of that <laughs> <laughs> um gosh no i don't think so i really wanted to okay. give something yeah i don't know that's no, okay no no <laughs> don't feel pressured don't feel pressured you've already given um four you know you, you've given three great tips plus the plus the extra one at the beginning so um, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're 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 well satisfied on that front and i'll um i'll make sure those things go into the show notes just so there's a little bit of info on what we've talked about um and if there's anything else you want to add in there you're more than welcome i can just throw in some links or or whatever else so people can find you and find out a little bit more about you and and maybe reach out and connect to you and ask you some questions because like I said earlier, if there are people listening that haven't done the awards that are thinking about doing the awards, the smart thing to do is talk to someone who's already won. <laughs> mm, I, I tell you what, a hundred percent. And I think even going into the awards, you know, Jin and Michaela were in, you know, in the finals, fi yeah. they were finalists as well. I didn't know yeah. the other finalists, <laughs> yeah. um, but I want, and I think that's the that key of finding people that are supportive is, you know, Michaela and I were kind of messaging back and forward and, you know, she would ask me questions and I'd be like, well, this is my experience with doing this. And yeah. I'm always more than open to chat to people and give right. them advice or help them with something. I'm all for it because if people yeah. didn't do that for me, then I wouldn't be where I am now either. So sure. yeah, sure. what goes sure. around comes around. <laughs> it does indeed. It's all, you know, it's, it's all swings and roundabouts. Yeah, it's definitely, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, pay it forwards. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Brilliant. Cool. Thanks, Donna. It's really been great ca catching up again, chatting in episode two. We'll maybe have to plan an episode three at some point. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Cheers. See ya. Thanks, Rich. <laughs>